last Christmas with my mother-in-law and one other family member had sciatica and I showed them this short routine with these three exercises and they had immediate relief and within three or four days they were able to move again normally. Okay, this is a short follow along routine designed to target one thing and that's sciatica. If you've ever had sciatica before, you know that it's painful. It's essentially when the piriformis, a little muscle in the butt gets very tight from a lot of sitting and it pinches the sciatic nerve and that can be debilitating. It can stop you from moving at all. Generally, the symptoms that show up is really sharp kind of nerve pain. So you might experience uh, sciatica anywhere along that nerve line. But essentially the problem is there's not enough external rotation in the hip. So if you're sitting at a desk a lot and you don't have a lot of variety in your movement diet, if you're not opening up your hips often, then that's probably why you're having sciatica. So the way that we target that is more movement more often with these three moves. Let's check them out. Okay, the first movement is called a hip swivel. So come down and sit on the floor with your hands behind you, with your butt on the ground and your feet on the ground out in front of you. Now, if you've got sciatica, that's already gonna be difficult. It'll take you five minutes to get into this position. But where we're gonna start is just internally rotating the knee. You won't be able to get that far initially if you have sciatica, maybe you're here. But you just work through as deep as you can through that range of motion and not just going through the motions, we have to use our muscles to abduct. So we need to use the glute muscles to pull the knee outwards. And then we need to use the adductors, the ones on the inside, to pull the knee inwards as far as possible. And that's just gonna loosen up the hips and it's going to give a bit of a dynamic stretch to the piriformis, which is the beginnings of loosening up that muscle and reducing the symptoms of sciatica. So we want to do 10 reps on each side. Now we can switch to the other side. Now the important thing here is that as we internally rotate, you want to keep your butt on the ground. If you're coming in so far that your butt lifts up off the ground, you're going too far. So you need to keep your butt muscles grounded on the floor and only go as far as you can with your hip bones, your sitting bones on the ground. So we want 10 reps in each direction on each leg. And that is our first exercise. So we'll finish off these reps and then we'll get into the next exercise, which is the hip hinge. Okay. So that's our first one done. Let's get into the next exercise. So our next exercise is a hip hinge and we're gonna perform 15 to 20 reps. And the idea here is that we're lengthening the hamstrings with a very straight back. So usually when you bend over and touch your toes or try to, your back will be very round. So in this case, we wanna keep your chest out, your shoulders back, your abs on, and then we wanna hinge. The other thing we need to pay attention to is the knees. We want to have your knees perfectly straight in the hip hinge. So we want to feel the quads completely locked out and we want to push the knees all the way back. And when you push them all the way back, you'll feel muscle engagement on the quads. So 10 to 15 reps, just hinging forward, nice and slow, under control, and really dial into your body and really feel the glutes and the hamstrings stretch and lengthen and you feel it a little bit in the lower back but not so far that it aggravates the sciatica even more and we want to pay close attention to the back because as it starts to bend that's the point that is your maximum so that's where you're going to stop now if you're in a real flare up with sciatica maybe you're only able to go here and that's okay we just want to work within that pain-free range of motion that you have and we don't want to aggravate it anymore okay now we're going to move into the third move which is the figure four glute stretch we're going to do that lying down on the floor uh, even better if you've got a wall or somewhere to place your foot against so we're going to come down here so i want you to lie down with your back on the floor the leg that we're going to stretch this one is going to be placed just on top of the knee here 
So this is essentially the position of the body that needs to happen to prevent and treat sciatica. It's flexion of the hip, it's abduction of the hip, and it's uh, external rotation of the hip. So this is probably one of the most important ones, bang for buck, for uh, relieving that pain. So what we want to do here is we want to force some more mobility by pressing the knee away from the shoulder. Now, you can do this sitting at a desk, uh, but I like this version because it keeps the back perfectly straight and it's very low intensity, it's low effort, and all we have to do is just press away to gain more mobility. One of the things I like to say about mobility is that we have to force mobility and then we have to own it. So for, firstly, we can force it by pressing away with the hand, but then eventually, after a couple of sessions of doing these routines, you want to own mobility by doing that with your own muscles. So you want to engage the glute here to abduct and pull out, to pull the knee away, and you'll start to feel a nice little stretch in the hip and a stretch in the glute. So where you can start with this is just maybe with 10 to 15 presses, so pressing away, and do this on both sides. I mean, start on the affected side, but also work on the other side, because if you're tight on one side from doing a lot of sitting and not a lot of movement, it's likely you're tight on the other side as well. So 10 reps pressing away. Then if you like, you can go into 10 reps of owning mobility by pulling away with the knee. Do five more. So really engaging the glute and pulling out. And then we can switch to the other side. So when we combine those three movements, you want to do this twice a day. Go through this routine three times in the morning and three times in the evening. Be very gentle with yourself. Be very uh, cautious with the range of motion that you move into. And be really focused on engaging the muscles that are around the hips. If you can maintain that range of motion over time, if you can get more variety into your movement diet, then you hopefully will be able to maintain a pain-free hip range of motion for the long term. And that means you're gonna be able to get out hiking get out into the mountains and enjoy things without being in pain and that is the main thing so come back and revisit this routine follow along if you have questions put them in the comments section in my programs we go into much more detail of how to do these moves and many many others so if you haven't checked out those they'll be in the link in the description thanks for watching i'll see you on the summit